Hi everybody, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold and we have class number two today for 1400 and over. <clears throat> and today we're going to look at a specific opening for a very specific reason. As you all know, and there, there's, I think there's no way you could know it. Yeah, you can't even know it. Yesterday we had a tournament here and I played an extra rated game. The reason was we had an even number and every section even, everybody's happy. Then five minutes after round one started, a guy walked in and played the open section. Now we have a buy every round. So the guy in round two, who I know well, he's like, I don't want to play you. So you got a buy, is it? In round three, he decided he would play me and, and take his buy. So I won. And in round four, the guy, somebody withdrew, so we, I, I wasn't needed. Anyway, so I was needed for one game. So I played a game in this opening that I know pretty well. And it's black and a sozin. Now, as you all know, I play the Sicilian, okay? And in the Sicilian, I often get this position. If I'm black in a Sicilian, after e4, c5, I would say I have this position half the time. And otherwise, they play c3 Sicilian and close Sicilian, and bishop b5 Sicilian, and the et cetera Sicilian. Okay, and here, it's well known to everybody in the audience, the two most common moves for white are... Very well known. Okay, the move that's on the screen, Bishop E4, and the other move, the other move is called the Rouser or Richter Rouser. You. Bishop E5. No, close. You couldn't be closer. You. Bishop E6. Correct. Yay. Okay, those good, those are good jokes we told back and <laughs> forth here. Okay, the correct answer obviously is Bishop to G5. Okay, and then white plays queen d2 and castles queen side, followed by etc. Okay, now I could lecture on that all day because I get paid by the all day. But I'm lecturing on bishop c4 today. This is the Sozin. This was a, fam a famous, this was a favorite of Bobby Fisher. And so many people call it the Fisher Sozin for obvious reasons. Whatever those reasons are, I don't know. Now, the two most common moves, e6, by far the most common, played yesterday in the famous game Chow Feingold, and queen b6, which is the second most common move, which I've also played. And we're going to look at four games I've played throughout the years with both of these moves. So we'll get rid of this, because that's nonsense. Now, one thing you have to realize is there's two move orders to get this position. I actually play the less common one. And the purpose of the move order is to allow or not allow certain variations of bishop b5. So for example, most grandmasters to get to this position would play d6, and then after d4, take, take, here, here, knight c6. Although most grandmasters would play the knight or play a6. But okay. And the reason is most grandmasters, not me, after d6, bishop b5 check, they don't mind so much. They mind it more after knight c6, bishop b5. In fact, I'm the opposite. I don't really know d6, bishop b5 check. This I know. Okay. Now, if you're going to play the accelerated dragon, if, there's two ways you can play it. The way I play it, and sometimes I play the accelerated dragon. And so sometimes in this position, I'm flipping a coin in my head by using noise from space, obviously. The only fair way to do it. Okay, and that's to play g6 here or play the line that I showed you we're going to look at today. Now, Eugene Perlstein, for example, your favorite Grandmaster, he plays g6 on move 2, also playing the accelerated dragon, but avoiding bishop b5. This is like the hyper no, right, not avoiding queen takes d4, which he doesn't care about. I care about it, so I avoid that with knight c6. Okay, now, this is a question of what we're avoiding, but we're getting to this position. And the way I get to this position is I play knight c6. Most people play d6 to get to that position. And then I play d6 here, and I could also play e6 or e5. Those are also book moves. Okay. But this is the position that I get. This is what I know. Now, in the famous book, Beating the Sicilian by... No, nobody? Anybody? Dr. John Nunn. Uh, followed by Beating the Sicilian 2, Beating the Sicilian 3, and 4. Okay? And the more, the more versions he makes, the more money he gets. Um, he dubs this the classical variation, although he says it doesn't really have a name. Okay, because white can make any move now, but bishop c4 is the sozin. We all agree on that. Now, this game was played in 2002 in a Thanksgiving tournament they have every Thanksgiving. 
And as an aside, the person who invented this tournament, the Motor City Open, delivered me in the in the operating room. Or he was he was the and he wasn't an OBGYN either. He was known as the witch doctor. That explains. That. He was also 1900, the USCF. True story. All that stuff is true. I have more stuff I can say about him too. For example, he was seen during one of his turning games turning the clock back for his opponent, which you can't do now. It's digital, but when it was analog, you could do that. A little bit of cheating. Okay. So in this game, I played e6, which is what I usually play. I play queen b6 sometimes. We'll see that. And this is called the Valamirovich attack, named after Mr. Attack. Attack. Very good. Okay. And in this position, white played rook g1. And this is a very funny story, which I've told many times. I could let one of you tell it. Let's see. Yeah. I was on an airplane in maybe 1994. And I had a chess book, like one of these books, and it was a hardcover book from the 70s in descriptive notation, confusing the audience. And I remember opening the, it was a book on like this opening. And I opened up the book, and it was in the middle, and it had this position. Oops, queen c7. Okay, it had this position with queen e8. And I thought it was a typo in the diagram because it was a 70s book. And this, that was the last move, was queen to king one. And I was like, what? Okay, and then I've played queen e8 like seven times. I'm something like seven and over there. Or maybe I lost to, actually I lost to Sam Sevian, so I'm seven and one. Okay, and whenever I play queen e8, my opponents are confused. Now this game, I play queen c7, which is the most common move. And the reason is funny. This guy is actually my student, uh, or was, in 2002. So he knew that I played queen e8. So he probably was ready. And then when I play here, he was like, wait, what? He doesn't play that. I, I assume that's why I did it, because we actually looked at chess together, so. Okay, now, my first lesson with this gentleman, he, he was a kid, now he's not a kid, it's 2002. My first lesson, he was rated 1500, and we had a chess lesson, okay? And he got to 2200, obviously, because greatest coach ever. And in the chess lesson, he showed me a game he played in Chicago, okay? And, um... The position was this. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and his opponent played here, which is not, not a good move, and he responded with this. What? Yeah, and I was like, man, I got, I got to tough student over here, right? Okay, and I said, why'd you do that? And he, very reasonable what he said. He said, my opponent picked up his e-pawn, and I did the series move that I just wrote e6. I like wrote e6, and then I looked back and played bishop e3. I didn't even see where he moved his e-pawn. It didn't even occur to me to look. Because e5 is like considered a mistake, so he didn't even look at e5. And then it, it turned out it was a good move. because like Anyway, that's the guy that I made 2200, the guy who played bishop e3. So, very proud of myself. All right. Anyway, back to reality. Oh, okay, there goes gravity. All right, don't sue me on him. All right, I'm from Detroit also. Anyway, so I played e6, and we got this position where I usually don't play queen c7, but I did. The reasons for queen c7 are so obvious, I won't even talk about them. So, obviously, I don't want my rook on the same line as his queen, because he'll play rook takes queen. I want to play b5 at some point, probably pretty soon, but my knight would be hanging. So queen c7 takes care of all that. Okay. And if my opponent decides to play f4, e5, I've defended e5 more. Okay, and maybe I'll take his bishop when his queen runs over here and mates me. He might mate me, but I'll be up a bishop. Okay, play bishop b3, knight to d7, knight to c5. I've actually had this position many times with my queen on e8. I'm not used to this queen c7 stuff. And he played knight f5, or as I like to say... Knight f5. Yeah, there's good harmony there. Okay, not as good as Zoidberg doing harmony with himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a guy who knows his Futurama. Okay, now let's see how, how well he does know Futurama. Who was upset about that? Lila. Who? Lila. No, Amy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amy. Amy's like, well, what's happening here? He's doing harmony with himself. And she complained about it twice. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, and then they were like, whatever, he's Zoidberg, give him a break. Okay, now the point of knight f5, first of all, it's knife f5, is if I ever take the knight, he has d5 for his knight, 
He takes back with a G pawn and checkmates me. Now I'm not required to take the knight, so I didn't. I played B5. Okay? And then he did it. Again. Yeah. Bishop D5. Recommended by Karen. In fact, Karen has a question. Why didn't white sacrifice more pieces? That's the way Karen plays. Okay, and again, if I take the bishop, knight takes d5 is annoying. Yeah, that's good looking knights in there, isn't it? But again, I'm not required to take those pieces. Now, of course, white has a reason for his move bishop to d5. He wants to take this knight. And then if I take back, knight takes e7 check is annoying. Okay, so bishop b7. That way, if he takes my knight, I, my queen is still defending this way. Okay. Bishop, and he did do that. And then he played ID5 anyway. He's like, I'm sacking a piece whether you want me to or not. Okay? And I was like, nope, I don't want you to. And so, if I take this way, and he takes back, my bishop's hanging, and my, my bishop's going to be double attacked, and all my pieces are hanging. Okay? But, if I do play the way I played then it's all blocked up. Now if he takes, and I take, I'm just up a piece. I'm not afraid of his attack because his pieces all disappeared. So, so he, traded, he traded on e7 to not lose a piece. Okay. And rook c8. So I'm not a big believer in white's attack. Also, what attack? Is there an attack? Okay. And then I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm looking good. All right. So g5, he's trying to attack. I'm going to double up on the bubble up. Rook h4, here he comes. g6. Now, queen h5 is annoying, right? Yeah. But after g6, queen h5 is less annoying. Yeah, much, more. much less. That's annoying for him. All right, so queen g4. I guess he wants to go to h3. e5, blocking up the center. And he played f4. Now, if he plays queen h3, which he didn't do, I have more than one defense. I'm actually not sure what I would have done. Um, I can defend a normal way by moving my f pawn and my rook and queen defend. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or I could put it in h. Okay. Then he plays the move that scares all of you. Yeah. Right. And then when I play here, you're less scared because you can't do vishwa nothing. Right. Well, what's he going to do now? If it was bug house, okay, maybe, but it ain't bug house. It's real life. So I wasn't sure which move I would play. Maybe at the time I was sure, but this was 2002. So I don't know. Anyway, he played f4, and I took, and he played bishop to d4. Now, here he comes. Rook takes h7 is the threat. Yeah. Yeah, Archer agrees a lot. Yeah. See how he's meeting me, Karen? Terrible. Yeah. Okay, so I resigned because that threat's too strong. Okay, so I play queen e4, and then, what song did I sing? I meet you, you meet me, except I meet you. So, if he goes here, and I can't take it because I get mated, then I go here, and you get mated. Yep. Then the next move is queen c2 mate, with advantage. Yeah. Also, he could play mate, then we're both mated. All right. Okay, so he saw that I'm going to mate him on c2, so he played c3. Now I can't mate him on c2. Did you get PO'd? Correct. I almost made that joke. Okay, and now he played king d2. Let's pretend he continues the mating facade. He takes and takes here. You see the mate I'm talking about? Okay, now this will surprise all of you. Of these three pieces, which one is scaring me the most as far as getting mated? You. The queen. Okay, you say the other one. That way we get all three in. He said rook, he said queen. So that must be the I was going to say rook. Okay, it's the bishop. Oh. Yeah, that's the, that's the piece that's scaring me. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, so, so I take it. Oh, snap. Now I never, ever, never, ever, never get mated. Ever. And you're Never. Yeah, I got my queen. I'm defending that. So and there's no there's no mates anywhere. And yeah. Rotation. yeah, I know, but there's no mate. Yeah, I can never get mated. Queen H4. No, there's no threat. Queen H4. Yeah. You can make a million moves in a row. Queen H4, keep moving. Yeah, you're right. That's queen H6, keep moving. They ain't mating me. I defended all that. Okay, so he didn't like that. So he just played King D2 like a boss. Okay, and I played Knight E5, blocking his bishop. Also, some of you might be afraid of Knight takes Queen. Okay, but. 
So he took, I took, and he's not mating me, although his king, queen h3, rook d8. I was very concerned about this, except I wasn't concerned about it. And he played king c1. Let's see what if I should be concerned about that. First of all, I can never get mated because I can go here, trade queens. He can't even trade queens. He loses his rook. He has to let me trade the queens. But I could also do this with check and then do this with check. So I'm, I'm not very concerned over there. Okay, so king c1, h5, takes, and you know what I played? Yeah. Now, white has a big attack except for one thing. No. There's no attack. Okay, queen g4, he's going to worm his way in. Right? Just like in rounders. You see rounders? Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. who, who, who are the two main characters? Names of Matt, Matt Damon was one of them. Right, and the other one uh, yeah, is Worm. Oh, <laughs> Worm. That's his name. Yeah, on that's the, right. the, ah, you remember Worm? Yeah, okay. yeah. played by Ed Norton. Norton. Yeah, it. right. You see, you saw it. What? Okay, so Rook takes d5, Rook g1. Rook, man, we're both mating each other, except he's not mating me. Man, now Queen c2 is annoying. Yeah, but he threatened me too. Maybe it's his move and we forgot. Nope. Yeah, okay. So I have a lot of those kinds of games in this opening where we castle opposite sides, we meet each other, and the audience loves it. And then my blood pressure goes up. Okay. So problem is when you're playing somebody rated 2,000, if you make a really bad move, they can get a winning position. But usually they mess it up anyway and I still win. So, But I haven't made a blunder yet in this opening where I'm just getting crushed. So, so far, so good. Okay. Now, I have a question that I want you to remember when the lecture's over. See queen c2 mate? You see it? You see it? Okay, when the lecture's over, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> okay, then I played Michael Brooks. This is a famous game for one of his comments. This is a famous Michael Brooks comment. Michael Brooks, the only player I've played where during the tournament that I played him in, he was previously in the hospital during the tournament. He played a couple of rated games, go to the hospital, come back and play some more rated games. Okay, he's the Mikhail Tall of St. Louis chess, even though he lives in Kansas City. Yeah. Now, Tall, Tall occasionally would drink alcohol and occasionally would smoke. Okay, but Tall was born sick, like Lady Gaga, and uh, Michael Brooks was not born sick, but has the same afflictions and occasionally goes to the hospital. So, all right. So I'm playing Michael Brooks and we play the usual sharpness, the, the usual. I play queen b6. Okay. He can play a lot of moves here. He played the most common. Okay. And the idea of queen b6 is there's no white knight on d4, so he can't go raw like my last opponent. And the bishop's always going to b3 and being safe. And that's also illegal. So that's the point is put the knight on b3. So this bishop's hanging out to dry, and there's no knife f5. Okay. And a lot of guys will castle kingside in this variation, but not Michael Brooks. He's castling queenside. Okay. And we get the same kind of position that we were looking at before. And I played b4. Normally, I've already castled. But why should I castle when I can start attacking first? You with some crazy comment. Didn't you play like knight d5 here? Right. You remember, that, you remember all my lectures. Yeah. Karen was going to just say that, but you, you, you know, preempted her. So after b4, white has one very obvious move. Knight b1. Knight b1. Otherwise, I take your knight. Okay. And, and after knight b1, I don't know, a5, a4, I don't know. I attack. Okay. Let's see what the engine says. Am I better? Am I butter? Okay. It says, oh, you could take the knight on c5 also and then play knight e4. All right. So it says I'm better. He could take this knight and then play knight a4 because my knight's not defending it. Okay, so the computer likes black. Anyway, he played knight d5. Now there's two reasons to play knight d5. He chose the second reason. The first reason is knight d5, rawr. That was why man, the last guy did it. He was like, I'm gonna beat you. And I, and I asked him after the game, did you think knight d5 was a good move? Or you just didn't like knight b1? He's like, yeah, I don't like knight b1. He's like, I'm not playing knight b1. So, knight d5 is the other move. That was the default, because knight b1 he didn't like. The default was to sack a piece. He got a lot of compensation, except for one thing. 
No compensation. Right. So I took. Now, if I misplay it, he could crush me, but I played correctly. I took the bishop, which is correct, and played. I trade all the pieces off so he can't meet me. Okay, hard to meet me when he has no pieces. Now, this is actually a very funny move I played. He played bishop takes g7, which is also crazy. And I have a funny story about this. Here, he played rook g1. Now, this was a round robin GM tournament. There were like five GMs and five IMs playing. And two of the GMs were friends, and they were sharing a hotel room. And their game ended in a quick draw, and they were back in their hotel room watching the game on the internet. Watching, There was actually another GM group that was stronger than mine. So. And they saw this game, because, you know, White sacking all his pieces, and we're mating each other. And when he sacked on G7 and played rook G1, they told me later they couldn't stop laughing. It's like, sack a piece, then rook G1. Like, when you sack all your pieces, it would be a good idea to mate your opponent. Not, let, let's prepare the attack a few moves, and then we'll try to mate him. So if you are going to play rook G1 and try to attack me, maybe not play bishop takes G7 first. Right? Now, when your opponent sacks all his pieces and you're up two bishops, you know if you defend, you'll win. Like, I defend and I win. Or if I don't defend, I'll get mated. But I still play queen A2 because I didn't see any threats. I was like, there's no threats. I can't defend against the threats. I don't see them. So, yeah, that's when you know you're in trouble when your opponent isn't defending against your attack. Like, what attack? There's no threats. Okay. All right, so he played G6. That was very scary except for one thing. It wasn't scary. Usually you take toward the center, which I'm sure wins, but taking this way is better because it activates my rook. So it actually makes F5 impossible. I assume... If I took this way, he would play f5, which I'm sure that I'm like plus 20 there, but this, this is even better. Yeah. What time control is? Slow chess, you know, like 90 minutes and 30 second increment. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then he resigned. So he just like got no attack, but he's kept getting his pieces away. Yeah. So when you give your pieces away and make your opponent, everybody's like, yay. They don't show you the games where like, ah, my pieces are gone. Dang. Okay. And then he has nothing. He's just down two pieces. That's plus, plus a billion. Yeah. Yeah. So that game, again, it's scary because when your opponent's high rated and they're sacking their pieces, you're like, uh-oh, this isn't good. Yeah. And in that ilk, in this, in this same room, around the same time, probably a year or two later, I was playing Shabalov in the last turn of the U.S. Championship, and I made a move, and I hit the clock, and he went like this. And I was like, uh-oh. And then he made a move and was plus 30. <clears throat> and I was better before the move I made. So, yeah, yeah I, I, but he moved and I was like, uh oh, that's not good. And then he made a move I didn't see and I had to resign. So when your opponent sacks all their pieces, it's scary, especially when, you know, they're pretty reasonable players. But yeah, here he just was like Fox News. Crazy. Okay, this was one of my best games and I played this in downtown Atlanta. Uh huh. Right. Also, no, no, also acceptable. Okay. And this is against A. Liang. We'll just pretend the ace for a wonder. And this is actually a kid. You know, you know, right? It's a kid, high schooler. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and he's twenty one hundred on a good day. It wasn't a good day. And same opening because I said so, right? See, see, it makes sense, right? Yep. So's in. Okay. And I got to play my queen e eight. I think. Yeah. Okay. And now he played all bad moves. That's not a good idea. So grandmasters always play rook g1, g4, g5, etc. Mainly. Etc. Yeah. He played king b1, which is a bad move. And now this highlights one of the strengths of queen e8. Also, if you're watching on my stream, king b1 is a good move. Okay. And the reason is one of the things the queen does on e8 is it protects a4. So when I play bishop d7, b5, b4, it's very difficult to play knight a4 because my queen and bishop are lined up there. However, it's very easy to play knight b1. However, now it's not very easy to play knight b1. So guess what I did? I tried to play b5, b4. Amazing. Okay. And f3 is probably the losing move. I think white's actually losing after f3. f3 is a passive move that does nothing. Like you got to checkmate the guy. So king b1, passive doing nothing, f3 passive doing nothing. Now bishop d7, which looks innocuous, right archer? Sure. Okay. It looks like bishop d7, he's developing his bishop, so what? Not so what, so Mamajarov. Now I'm threatening to win a piece, confusing the audience. Okay, I'm threatening knight takes knight, 
or B4. Wait, I can't make any moves? Wow. I, I couldn't do anything. Good, good, good program, chess base. Good job. What? Okay. Ah, no, wait, what happened? Oh, it made the moves that I didn't make when I was trying to move. That was funny. Okay, so what I want to do is play B4. He'll play knight A4. I'll play knight takes knight on D4, and the queen and bishop battery wins the day. Okay, he didn't want me to do that, so he played queen F2 for obvious reasons. What are those obvious reasons? You! To make an escape spot for his knight. Yeah, now his knight can go to E2 if I, yeah. So he's playing a good defensive game. It's a very sharp sozin with checkmates. Every move he makes is boring and defensive. Somehow I won. Okay, so I pushed all my pawns. And now A4 is easy to stop, except for one thing. It's not easy to stop. Pretty simple threat, right? Okay, so A3, then let's, let's go. Here comes the A file attack. Rawr! White's attack doesn't look very good. Also what attack? Yeah, right. And here comes the A file attack, threatening mate. Okay. So now I played a move that would make Morphe proud. Rook A8. They always say Rook A8. Rook A8 is a good move. Mine was better. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, no, that's what I did. I just, I'm, you're in better shape than I am. I can't move that far. <laughs> you. Rook C8? Yeah. And the threat is to play Queen Shack, King C1, then take the Knight. Yeah. Rook A8 has the same, you know, Queen A1 mate idea. He'd probably run away. I'm actually trying to stop him from running away. Because it looks like he should run away now. Looks like this might be a better square for his king. But he can't play king c1. If I play rook e8, he has to play king c1. So I'm like, I need to doing that. Okay, he played rook d3, which stops my threat of check and queen takes knight, because he defended his knight. And I played d5, a Sicilian lover's dream. And I'm a vegan. Yeah. Nobody? Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah, try to, try to slice that up. All right, now he blundered, although if he doesn't blunder, I'm winning. This surprises a lot of my students. So I don't mean like this position, I mean all positions. What's the material situation? Equal. Equal, right? If I push the default kibitzer, what's the result? Must be equal. No, black's no. way up. Minus three. Minus In your dreams, you're minus three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's better than you could ever dream. Yeah, and I just let it sit for a second. It's at two CPUs. Your, your computer would announce me. He's like, maybe. Mm. Maybe. 15 minutes later. Maybe, yeah. All right, so I have a big attack. All my pieces are good. And he played F3 and his rook's on H1. Okay, now he attacked bishop G5. What's defending his bishop? Nothing. Right. You. Knight takes E4. Right. Archer's like, I've seen this game. Knight takes E4. Also, you played this tournament. And you played. And you and you get a new car. Did Archer play? I think so. It was the one downtown, and then they had the crazy thing going on in the basement with the tattoos and stuff. I lost to Komsky in the last round, and Sedora won. Yeah, I think he played. I think he played, yeah. 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 This is before I lost to Komsky. <laughs> okay, now, the point of 94 is not to win a pawn. The point of 94 is not to win his bishop. The point of 94 is to stop King D2. So if it's my move, I checkmate him. Also, if he takes my knight, bishop takes bishop, stops king c1. And that's annoying. Now the computer will announce, I think your computer would announce mate. Like yours. I don't think mine will. Uh, it might. You're like, man, that's uh, looking good. All right. All right. So, man, black's pieces are all pretty good. Not as good as his rook on h1, but I'm trying. Okay. So he took... I checked. Now he did something really, really, really um, bad etiquette. I checked and he resigned. Come on. Are you kidding me? You can't resign here. Either you resign after 94 or you play to mate. You don't resign in the middle of it. Yeah. And he resigned instead of getting mated. Okay. All right. And this all leads us to the important game of the lecture. That was the preamble, right? And now for your edification, one of you will say the preamble. Well, well, just tell me if you could. In order to form a more... Wait, what was the beginning? Uh, no. We? We the people. Uh, we the people of? Of the United States of America yeah. in order to form a more perfect union. To... And then some other stuff? 
Yeah. Well, when I was his age, I probably Establish justice, justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and ensure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and, and our, our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. All right, your turn, Archer. <laughs> when you're in middle school, you have to memorize it. What? You just watch TV and memorize it. Okay, so I was playing Caden, and before the game, Caden actually said the, the preamble. No. 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 I said more in the last 20 seconds than Caden said this year. Yeah, exactly. Caden does his talking on the chessboard. Okay, so we did what I said we would do. And then I did something I do a lot. My opponent makes moves that I know are bad, so I refute them. And then my refutation is insane, so I'm just lost. I do that all the time. Okay, so in this position, he played F3, which is bad. There's no, no grandmaster games with F3. So I'm like, oh, I can refute that. And then I just play all bad moves and I'm lost. So instead of just playing normal, I'm always like, rawr. Well, if you play against the Night Orf, it's a very normal looking move. Right. No, I mean, F3 is a move, but not here. Yeah, it's not a move here. Okay. So the difference is my knight's on C6, so I'm ready to go. I'm ready with d5, I'm ready to play knight e5, knight takes knight. Okay, and here, I should probably just play a6, but, but d5 is okay. And that's how you refute f3 and f4 as you played early d5, which the knight orf doesn't make a lot of sense, because my knight's on d7. Then c6 makes a lot of sense. My knight's not blocking my queen and my bishop. And here, actually the engine says every move I made is better than my move. Knight a5 is better, which I didn't see, and knight takes is better, which I didn't see. I took with the pawn. And now it just says I'm worse. Normally you want to do this when they move their f-pawn, because this doesn't make any sense anymore. Like, this should be here. So, okay. And I played super aggressively, like I like to do. And he surprised me with knight e2. There's a lot of good moves here for white. That move just has the intention of winning my d-pawn, because all of his pieces are attacking my d-pawn. Okay, so I played bishop b4. And after a3, the computer says my next move is a blunder. I played a4. And it says after bishop takes d5, he's just up a pawn. And I assumed somehow that would be bad for him without doing like a thorough analysis. I was like, well, my rook's attacking his bishop, his queen's defending it, it's pinned, it's defending this. I'll, I'll just take some stuff and win. But here's like, you know, white's up a pawn. Okay. So he played bishop a2, which I expected. And I played bishop a5. And I thought he would, I wasn't sure what he would do, but he played queen d3, unpinning his knight. And now I thought a long time, because I didn't know what to do. I'm going to lose my d-pawn. So knight e5. Obviously, I don't want to draw. The computer says knight c6 is equal, because I can draw. Let's repeat. So bishop f5. Now, I was sure he would take my d-pawn somehow, and he did. But he should play bishop to g5. And that's pretty annoying, because um, knight's pretty pinned. I don't really mind losing a pawn, because in many of my games of the Sicilian, where we castle opposite sides, I prefer not to get checkmated. And if I have an attack, and you don't have an attack, I don't really care if you're up a pawn. And I'm going to have open A files, and C files, and D files, and the king side is just, he's got nothing. So, Okay, so he took, which is okay. I took, which I think the computer does not like, and he took, and I played rook c8, which the computer does like, and he stopped rook c2 by playing bishop e4. And here, the computer says black's already better if I play queen f6, and I almost played queen f6, but I misunderstood something. I thought after I take that queen takes e4 is bad. In fact, queen takes e4 is the only move. And other moves that I saw he could play, I'm like, oh, I'm going to crush him if he does that. And I thought, oh, that's no good because he's lining up with this. I mean, it ended up that I was right because of his bad play, not because I was right. So now my queen is attacked, and I moved my queen. And here, white's still better because white's up a pawn, but obviously black's pieces are pretty good. My rooks are on open files to his pieces and king. My knight's on e5. His rook is still on h1, and practically speaking, I think if both players are under 2300, I'm betting on black all day. If both players are 2700, maybe white's doing well, okay, maybe. 
and he played the move that I expected, bishop to d4, and I played queen h6 check, and he blundered. Well, I thought I played bishop h6 check. No, I didn't because the computer stopped working. I got, I got a new computer just in time. Yeah. Okay, so I played queen h6 check. And now he made the losing move. Um, I thought he should play king b1, and after king b1, the computer prefers black. He actually should play queen f4, and the computer says it's equal or something. I don't know. Okay, but he made a move that loses immediately. And I showed this on my stream last night, and Spencer got it. Go, Spencer. Okay, he played bishop e3. Always repeat. Yeah, and now black wins. Who can find the winning move? There's a very tricky move which doesn't work, which I analyzed a long time, and I was like, that doesn't work. But then I found the non-tricky move, which does work. I guess tricks are for kids. Which, which move is the tricky move? The bishop d2 check? No, that's actually not even as tricky. Well, it takes with a rook, and I resign. Oh, a rook. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking of the bishop, and then knight c4 follow up but uh, man even you I don't know what you're talking about right. Right? You're, you're giving all your pieces away if you want to give all your pieces away this is the move you should be analyzing uh -huh. that's the move I analyzed so he can't take with the pawn because it's illegal takes to the queen I was pretty sure this is winning I'm still pretty sure that's winning I don't see what he does so the only variation I analyzed was takes 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 at first I thought I was winning because I'm threatening rook c2 check, rook g2, and his bishop's hanging on h6. And then I saw this move and I was like, oh, stopping everything and threatening my bishop. So I didn't do that. That's the complicated move. And I played the simple move. And the hint is it's the longest move. It's going to be rook takes c2. Right? No, nope, that's not as long as the other move. You can't find the longest move. The eight squares on the board. Yeah, I made the longest move. My move's longer than yours. <laughs> okay, queen a6. Queen a6. That move wins. I'm threatening his knight, and I'm also threatening knight c4, which is incredibly winning. Yeah, knight c4 threatens all of his pieces by discovery and non-discovery. And discovery. After queen a6, I'm like plus four. Or as you would say, minus four, because I'm black. Okay, now he thought forever. He thought, till, he thought like 20 minutes, and it was game in 75. But when I say game in 75, it was game in 45. Yeah. He thought 20 minutes here, because every move loses. So he's trying to find what it doesn't lose. Okay. He played rook d5, counterattack. Okay, and I ignored him. The reason I ignored him is if he takes my bishop, I have many moves that win. The nicest is 93 check, threatening his queen, his bishop, his king, and queen c2 mate. So if he takes, I'm up a queen. If he plays rook takes knight, oh, I didn't, that's not one of the moves. Plays rook takes knight, his queen is overworked. So I trade rooks and checkmate him. So he can't take either piece. So I took a piece. He played bishop f4. And this is where all your teachers your whole life were wrong. In fact, I didn't compliment Karen because I forgot. Karen was playing, it was Rufus or Doofus. In, in the tournament yesterday, mm -hmm. and you were up a piece, and you could trade rooks, and you did not trade rooks, and you doubled up on the bubble up, and then you baited him with your two rooks on the seventh. <clears throat> and I was thinking a lot of people just trade because they're up a piece, so that's what they do, and then I shake my head, okay? Then they pay me for chess lessons. Okay, so here, here's a really good example. Obviously, my king's safer than his. I mean, I got this rook, you know, rook c8 action going on here. Okay, and his queen's no good. Okay, I even I had a special conversation after the game with Linda Ronstadt about this queen. What'd she say, Karen? You're no good. All right, that's, <laughs> that's the best you could do. Yeah, okay, so I play queen takes g2, winning a pawn and keeping all my options open. Obviously, the rook is hanging on d1, so here. And now, like a Frenchman, I retreated, knight g6. Okay, I'm threatening the queen. I'm threatening the bishop, and I'm threatening mate. And he has one move defending all of them. What did he do?
Yeah. That's too hard. Anybody? Bueller. Okay, Queen F5. So he defends his bishop. He stops rook, takes queen. His queen's defending C2. Now, he's actually not defending his bishop because if he takes my knight, I made him. Okay. But my bishop on A5 is not defended, so he can take that. Okay. okay, so I played the obvious fork. It's the obvious fork. You forgot my always retreat mantra. It's the same piece I'm retreating to. Uh, 97. Right. Yeah. Now, the truth hurts. It's very hard to play a move for white. Very hard. Actually, it's pretty easy for him. Okay. And if I turn the engine on, I'm plus 31 or something. I don't know. Okay. He played queen d7. And now, this is the part of the lecture you're supposed to remember from before. I said, remember this for later in the lecture. I said it like 35, 40 minutes ago. What was the move I won with in the first game I showed you? And then I went back to the game and showed you again, so you'd remember. They're screaming it at home. Queen C2? Yeah, there you go, Queen C2, mate. I always play Queen C2, mate, in this, in this opening. And, as you all know, you might know, you probably don't know, you might. When I was a kid, I had a t-shirt, and it said Queen C2 exclamation mark. Yeah, 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 yeah. He does know that. He was like, what, you know that? Yeah. That's uh, in the name and, school, right? Right, and then it was funny, one of, one of my, uh, I played it against a guy, and he annotated it for a local, local state magazine. And I played Queen C2, and he wrote, as advertised on my opponent's shirt. <laughs> so, Queen C2, mate, you can't do better than that. Right. However, if he doesn't play Queen D7, the truth hurts. Some of the moves are worse than mate. Because your queen's attack, your queen's defending the mate, your rook. If you go here, for example, you can't take the knight because of the same mate. And if you play queen e4, now your queen's attacked by my rook. So, man, it's tough. Knight e7 is hard to meet. So the two most aggressive moves were retreating the knight and retreating the knight again. That's how chess works. Yeah. And then the shocking number is shocking the audience. Confusing everybody. With two CPUs only, it's still pretty good, right? Amazing, yeah. So that happens a lot in chess. You look at a game, it says plus 10, plus 20, plus 30, the guy's higher rated. You're like, oh, that was easy. The first 15 moves just said I was worse the whole game. I didn't turn the engine on then. The engine stayed off. Yeah, so I was worse, but I was the kind of worse where it's good I'm not playing a supercomputer. When I'm playing a human, that's good because any slip and then plus a thousand for me, and it's game 45, it's not 40 moves in two hours. And, you know. So he doesn't have time to figure out what to do, and the game's super complicated. That's what you're looking for as a higher rated player with black. Super complicated, opponent has no chance to play the right move. Not like, oh, I equalized like Geary, now I can draw. Okay. Yesterday, as you remember, you don't remember because it wasn't yesterday. Yesterday, there was the game Nakamura Anand. Okay, and that was drawn very quickly, maybe an hour and a half, and there's nothing to the game. They just traded, traded, read a draw. There's nothing on the board when they drew. Okay, there's a no draw rule, and they still drew. Yeah, there's a no draw rule. You can't offer one. You, you don't, there's a no draw rule, and it's with 29, and the game ended in a draw. That's, that's the kind of position it was. The Arbor is like, yeah, yeah, stop playing. Like, this is embarrassing. The Arbor is about 2,000 rated. Okay. I know the guy. So he could be like, yeah, okay. This is silly. Yeah. So. You could say, oh, Anand did really well. He's playing a higher rated player, he's black, he drew really easily. Okay, that's good for Anand, that's not good for me. I have to make the game where I have to win. I can't, I can't be like, yeah, I equalized and now it's a draw. So I can't play the same openings necessarily the top players do because in Georgia I'm the highest rated player, so I gotta beat people, okay? I have to. And I could try to beat them by getting an equal position now playing them and beating any moves, and I do that too. But this was more fun. When they play E4, I play the Sicilian. What can I tell you? So what are the key things to remember in the Sozin? Both sides are getting an attack. And often, I'll do things I shouldn't do, so I get an attack and they don't. Okay? Because when they attack, if you make a bad move, you lose. We're humans. We make bad moves sometimes. And some bad moves you can't recover from. And some bad moves you're like, oh, well, I'm worse, but who cares? 
So the bad moves that I made that game, the computer didn't like the way I got my isolated pawn and played a5, bishop b4, a4. Okay, so I'm worse. The bad moves he made, now I'm plus 20, 30, 40, because it's too complicated. So I've made those bad moves before the Sicilian where the computer says I'm worse. But I don't make the moves where I go from like equal to minus 20. Like, oops, I missed that move. So you have to see the tactics and the tricks. The positional stuff doesn't matter as much because of the opposite side castling. It's more important who has the attack. And when I play white in a King's Indian, I play a lot of funny lines where they don't get an attack. And they're like, wait, I'm playing the King's Indian, I'm trying to attack. So if you can get your opponent out of their comfort zone, sometimes they don't play very well. And there was a quote on Twitter today, and when I say today, not for you, uh, from Levon Aronian, and he said, if there's a, a position out of the opening you don't understand or like, play the other side. And that's why Levon's playing e4 now, and he's playing white side of the, the Berlin, and he won yesterday against the Minister of Defense. Funny Russian name. I think it's translated wrong. So I have a lot of games in this opening and very few draws. After bishop c4, it's possible in my life I have no draws possible. I don't think I do. I think I have like 15 wins and two losses or something. Yeah. Lost to Sevian. He was lucky. Lucky he was playing me. And I lost to Arthur Frolov, a guy you never heard of. Um, Grandmaster from some Russian Republic that doesn't exist anymore, I think. Maybe Ukraine. And that game was not opposite side castling. It was just boring and he outplayed me and I cried. Yeah. All right. And as Gene Wilder likes to say, how can I no longer alive? 